Saludos amigos, mi nombre es Manier, y hoy estoy muy emocionado y contento porque voy a estar hablando con los directores de la nueva película Rumble Through the Dark, la película con Aaron Eckhart y Bella Thorne que estrena en los cines el 3 de noviembre y va a estar imprimido on demand y en digital desde el 10 de noviembre. Así que les presento aquí a los directores a Graham Phillips y a Parker Phillips. Así que, first of all, thanks for taking your, uh, your time to, for this interview. And also, I want to know a little bit about you guys, how you started work. Basically, you are brothers. So, how was this dynamic of both of you guys working on this project? Yeah, well, it's, you know, it's a little different on every project that we do. But um, and sometimes people ask us, like, well, what if, who does what? You know, and there really isn't a very clear division of labor. We really do. Uh, we really try to both be prepared for everything. But I guess, you know, I'm maybe a little bit more on the technical side. Like you'll find me around like camera department and like moving. I'm 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 pretty hands on with uh, you know working with art department. And Parker tends to be, uh, you know, he he invites the actors on set. He's probably a little better at dealing with the actors uh, than I am. So you know, we we've sort of found our our strengths and. Um, You know, sometimes we switch, but yeah. we get balance. Uh, since you were more on the technical side, I love it. I love the way that we was shot. It was very beautiful. The way they went through the the cornfield and most of the uh, the movie is done outside, out, out outdoors. How difficult was it to capture all these feelings of being in the place surrounded with these characters? Well, it's uh, you know, Mississippi is a really unique place, and we filmed it in August very hot and that was important to us <laughs> yeah. Aaron Eckhart when we talked to him he said you know we got to film this when it's really hot and we're like yeah yeah <laughs> you know, that he liked that um you know but Mississippi's got such a unique landscape and um it has a lot of interesting energy to it so it, it made it easy to you know to capture it on on film and the park says you were working more uh, with the actors but well, what are you guys what how was it working with with our Eckhart Of course, he's from The Dark Knight. Everybody loves him as Harvey Dent. And then having this chance to work with him hands-on with this project, how how was it like not to get starstruck because working with him, all his amazing job he has done before, and he gave you his a performance to you. How how hard was it for you, or was it was just fun? Or yeah, see, yeah, you know, we yeah we were huge fans of his um, from uh, obviously Dark Knight and The Company of Men, and thank you for smoking. He's just, he's made really, you know, he's made some really interesting choices in his career. And we felt by offering him this role, we were offering him something he hasn't done before. And uh, he immediately felt the same way. And he, in talks with us, kind of, you know, told us, you know, really, I'm going to have to go to a place I haven't been before, um, you know, emotionally and physically. And that, that was really exciting for us as directors because we, we felt the same way. Um, and then he... Us and him were the first people who arrived in Mississippi. He came early to start training. He came early to start understanding the lane, landscape, the way that people spoke, you know, letting that all kind of soak in. And Aaron's just, uh, to be honest, the I was running one day uh, where we were staying in Mississippi. I hadn't met him yet. And I saw uh, this guy sitting outside reading a script uh, with his shirt off. He was trying to tan. And I think that's Aaron. So I ran over <laughs> to say And he turned around and he was already so in character. I honestly didn't re hardly recognize him. And uh, he just, you know, he, he carried that throughout the entire film. He he constantly was, you know, trying to in it and just, you know, physically and mentally, you know, inhabit, you know, what this, you know, bare knuckle fighter really, you know, needed to, to, to be to be able to pull off. Um, and he was, you know, in that way, he really was a joy to work with. He, he's such a hard worker. Yeah, uh, I think his performance was excellent because he was a broken man. He was had a hard childhood. He was left alone by his mom when he was a a, a, a boy, and then from there on, all the things that he felt so much love through his his mother who raised him and other hardships. So he was a different character we see him play. Usually, he's more a, a sneaky guy or more likes to talk a lot to get out of a situation. On this situation. He didn't talk that much. He was basically used more his his skills of fighting, which were the ones that gave him the reason, which were good, but also the same at uh, the same side of the set of, of the coin. He was also his his weakest point because he always resolved everything by fighting and he things things throughout the the situation. So how was it bringing in Michael Ferris Smith 
his, his book, The Fighter, basically taking the, everything and put it to your, to your movie. Well, the book was a very cinematic book, and I think that's part of what attracted Parker and myself to it. Uh, the images just seem to fly off of the page. And, um, you know, the dialogue was, was really incredible. And Michael adapted the book into the screenplay, which is pretty rare. A lot of times mm -hmm. authors are too close to their own work to really make it, you know, into a film because you kind of, some people say you have to kill your babies, you know, yeah. there are certain parts in order to make it the best film possible. You know, you, you got to take out some of the parts that you really like. And um, he he's not one of the authors that seems to have a problem with that. He's really great at adapting his own work. And he was on set pretty much every day. And he was a wonderful resource for our actors. Um, you know, it was great. If Barker and I were working on something and an actor wanted to just, just to talk and, you know, shoot the shit about whatever it was they wanted to talk about, you know, they could go and talk to Michael and he was a great resource for them. So, um, I, there's a reason why our next two films are collaborations with Michael Ferris. Oh, you touched that. And my next question, what's your next project with that be? So you're going to be working also with, with Michael. Can you give yep. us a little, a little preview on it? <laughs> if you can. Yeah, films. One is, um, based on his novel called Blackwood, which is a Southern Gothic, uh, horror film. Uh, it's like a psychological horror, um, which deals with ghosts and people hearing voices in this mysterious southern town. Um, and the other one is an original story that we came up with him called Do Not Go Gentle. And it is about uh, an older hitman who's trying to get out of the game uh, in Puerto Rico and how he deals. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that's where I'm from. That's where I'm, I'm from, Puerto Rico. Oh, is that right? Okay, cool. Yeah, we'll from have... Puerto Rico. <laughs> oh, nice. I love it already. <laughs> We're excited, you know. It'll be also. Cool. So, wow, that's a that's a great a great a great news. Well, guys, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. I just did it in nice little just to have a friend in Puerto Rico. So if you're going to Puerto Rico, should just give me a call. <laughs> I'll be more than glad to. Help. I also to remind people that Rumble Through the Dark is going to be available on theaters on November third, and then on demand on Vita on the on the tenth of November. Again, thank you guys so much, and have a good one. Thank you. Thank you yeah, so you much. Too.